Hi, I'm Dan Elder from Kidasa Software. Welcome to this Tips and Tricks video about Milestones Professional. For my first tip, let's say you have two symbols very close to each other or on the same date, and you want one symbol to be on top of the other symbol. So you can click on a symbol and then press left or right on your keyboard until you have the symbol selected that you want to show on top. And you should be able to see in the bottom of the screen on the uh, status bar down here which symbol you actually have selected. Um, so if I want to show this diamond on top here I can have that symbol selected and in the selection tab I would go to the size slash color uh, sub tab for this symbol and then I would choose this option right here symbol is on top. So that'll show it on top of any other symbol that might have been near it or on the same date Okay, my next tip is kind of a two-parter. The first part is changing the format of the date settings for the whole schedule. That's going to be in the dates tab. Right now it's currently just set to the day of the month. If I go to set symbol date format, I can change that to whatever I like, including some custom date formats down here if you want to set those up. But I could just set that to month and day and press OK. So that's going to change the global date format for this whole schedule. Also, on the View tab, if I go to Overwrite, Symbol Text, and Symbol Date Display, you can actually hide the dates from all the symbols and also the text. If you click on Overwrite, Symbol Text, and Symbol Date Display, for instance, I could choose Hide All Symbol Dates and press OK. So if your dates are not showing up when you think they should, you might need to go to the View tab and go to Override, Symbol Text, and Symbol Date Display. Again, this is going to affect the entire schedule, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to switch that back, and there we go. If you'd like to do sideways column text, you can select the column by hovering near the bottom of the column heading to select that whole column. Then you have these options here, Cell Text. Right now it's negative 90 degrees and to the left, and anytime you do that, uh, you're probably going to want to select these individual cells and we've got these options here so like hide bottom grid you can see if I was not hiding those bottom grids uh, that cell would you know just have the regular line across it but if you select those cells you can hide those bottom grids and then you can kind of make it look like they're merged together as a single cell this next tip is a little bit basic but for instance if I have my arrow tool selected I can click and drag on a symbol on the schedule and you can see that no other symbols are being affected even though they're kind of connected with bars and they're on the same row. If I go to the dates tab we've got dependency mode right here so if I turn dependency mode on with that little checkbox then I can click and drag the symbol and you'll see that all these other symbols are now affected by that so it kind of locks the duration so if I move the start symbol, it's going to affect all the dependent symbols down the line. If I move just this finish symbol here, it's not going to affect anything. Uh, this also does affect vertical links, so if you've got something connected with a vertical link to another row, uh, dependency mode will affect that as well. And that's in the dates tab, that dependency mode checkbox. So you might know that if you go to the format tab and click on horizontal grid lines and shading, you can change the colors for the whole schedule. If you just wanted to change a single section of the schedule, like maybe these rows right here, uh, I could hold shift and kind of select all of these rows uh, just by clicking in a cell and holding shift and then clicking down here to select all these rows. I can actually change the background just for this section right here. And once I've got these rows selected in the selection tab, you can see more task row options little drop down right there and then I can click grid line slash shade and you've got the grid lines tab and the shading tab so right now there's just grid lines on the left and the right side um, if I wanted to shade this whole section so the left the center and the right I could go to the shading tab and just click these little check boxes right here shade the task rows and then press OK so that's only going to shade these rows right here, and it left the 
grid lines how they were. One nice thing you can do is just add a grid line to the bottom. So the grid lines will go on the bottom of the row. So if I select this last row in this little section right here, again, I can go to more task row options, grid line shade, and it's only gonna affect this row that I've got selected. So I can just click show grid lines and it's gonna put it on the bottom there. And then there we go. And you can just repeat that for those other sections right there if you want to. You can see some of the dates and text have a opaque background. So I'm gonna to go to the view tab and go back to override symbol text and symbol date display. You can actually change the default on here. So right now the default is opaque. I'm gonna say the default is transparent for um, symbol text and date backgrounds. I'm gonna press okay. So some of these symbols are obviously set to opaque. So I'm gonna double click, for instance, on this triangle symbol right here and go to text and date properties. And then I can set the actual date background uh, and text background to transparent. Press OK. And this summary bar is actually using this symbol here in the toolbox. I'm gonna to double click on this symbol and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna set that to transparent for date and text background and press OK. And then you can see that got updated as well. All right, that's pretty much it for this tips and tricks. If you have any questions, feel free to email support at kidasa.com and be sure to visit our website at kidasa.com. Have a nice day.